There is such a place that's particularly funny. The poor are very patriotic, while the rich start planning to flee once they become rich. It's very friendly to foreigners, but turns a blind eye to its own people, no matter what hardship they face. It spreads money all over the world, showing the power of a green nation. It claims every day that everyone is equal, but divides its people into different grades, and privileged classes are everywhere. Policemen in this place don't help those who fight for their wages, defend their rights, but help capitalists to suppress workers. This place is full of praise, but if you speak the truth, they will say that you are disrupting the social order. People are collectively silent in this place. The media is like a decoration. The way to solve problems here is to silence the people who speak. People living on this land have trouble feeding and clothing themselves, but they go around the world offering charity and save people from their sufferings. Who do you think you are, the Bodhisattva Guanyin, the savior? If that's the case, you need to be like the golden monkey and cultivate yourself to fruition. But you're nothing. You claim to help others, but do you know what you are in other people's eyes? You are a lap dog to others. We all wish this place to become better because there are kind-hearted elderly people, lovely children, and a bunch of nice people living on this land. Guess where this is? This is China. On June 13, 2023, Henley and Partners, an international investment immigration consulting firm based in London, released a report. It stated that China would have the highest net outflow of HNWIs or high net worth individuals, each with investable assets over US 1 million in 2023. It's a trend that has been rapidly accelerating since 2022, when the Communist Party lifted its zero COVID policy and opened its borders. In 2022, approximately 10,800 wealthy individuals left China, and in 2023, it's expected to reach 13,500. The recent capital outflow has been more damaging than ever to the Chinese economy, as overall wealth growth in China has slowed over the past few years. The top three most popular countries for Chinese to immigrate are the US, Canada, and Australia, followed by the UK and Singapore. Some European countries with lower immigration thresholds such as Portugal, Ireland and Malta have also become their targets. In the first quarter, the National Immigration Management Agency verified a total of over 65 million people leaving the country. Among them, over 32 million were mainline residents. Over 29 million were residents of Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan. And over 3 million were foreigners. Today is Monday, May 15th, and this is the Tianhe district of Guangzhou City. You can see another long line, and the line is really long today. Such a scene in front of the U.S. consulate in Guangzhou isn't something unique that goes away in a day or two. It has been a lasting fervor with more and more Chinese flocking to the U.S. consulate. Here is a scene of the same place 15 days later. It's Tuesday, May 30th, 2023, and it's not even time to enter yet. This is what we see outside the U.S. consulate in Guangzhou. It's just after 7 a.m., and some people have been lining up since 6 a.m. The consulate doesn't open until 7.30 a.m. It requires an advanced appointment for a visa interview. However, in recent months, there are basically no appointments available, and Shanghai is similar. U.S. visa interviews are generally scheduled about three months in advance. However, appointments both in Guangzhou and Shanghai are no longer available despite a three-month advance, not to mention with less lead time. The peak period for visa application is in the months of June and July. Currently, appointments at the U.S. consulate in Guangzhou are already scheduled for October. The consulate in Shanghai is already scheduling for November. It isn't very hot in Guangzhou today. It's over 30 degrees Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit in the morning. As you can see, there is a very long line outside the consulate today. The next thing we'll look at is the situation at the windows for immigrant visas and non-immigrant visas after admission. Those to the left are for immigrant visas, while those to the back are for non-immigrant visas. 
You can see that there are some people with children here who are applying for immigrant visas to the US. There were about 40 people in line. Let's look at the non-immigrant visas, including work visas, study visas, and visitor visas. As you can see, there are two lines today. Previously, there was only a single line. There are obviously many more people here than there are for immigrant visas. Let's take a look at the US consulate in Beijing. Even though the number of interview counters at the Beijing consulate has been increased to 12, people still have to wait in long lines. Maybe it's because there has been a rise in the passing rate of interviews recently and everyone is coming. Maybe this is our shared dream that everyone is pursuing. Go, go, my friends. In the report by Henley & Partners, the international investment immigration consulting firm, it's estimated that more than 10,000 Chinese tycoons immigrated in 2022, taking with them about 4.8 million U.S. dollars per capita for a total of 48 billion USD leaving China. And this year, in 2023, the number is expected to get even bigger. Known Chinese tycoons who have emigrated with their capital overseas include many prominent mainland Chinese or Hong Kong business celebrities. For example, the founder of real estate developer Country Garden, the founder of Sunak Group, and the former chairman of Chinese Estates. The list goes on. So, as China's wealthy emigrate overseas and a lot of assets are moved out, how will it affect Chinese society? According to the National Association of Realtors' annual report, Chinese buyers remain the number one foreign buyer in U.S. residential sales, with $6.1 billion, continuing a trend that has been in place since 2013. Nearly 58% of Chinese buyers made cash purchases. The average purchase price was just over $1 million, with 31% of them buying in California. In fact, not only in California, but also in the eastern part of the U.S., such as New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, and in the city of Vancouver in Canada, there have been many Chinese buying with cash. These funds are among the gray incomes of corrupt officials who use their power for personal gain and corruption. In May 2022, news broke that a large amount of deposits disappeared from village banks in Henan. It was the result of a collusion between senior bank management and the local government. They took advantage of the lack of supervision of the banking industry and ran away with the money. A Twitter user disclosed that the deposits in the village banks amounted to RMB 40 billion, or about US 5.6 billion, of which 2.8 billion was used to bribe senior officials. These officials were at the level of the Politburo Standing Committee, the CCP's highest decision-making body, or their family members. Another 1.4 billion was used to bribe local officials. The banks ended up with no money to cover their deposits. The authenticity of this information cannot be confirmed, but it's in keeping with the corrupt operation of the CCP officialdom. Here, one depositor is being followed just after arriving in Zhengzhou, the capital of Henan province. Look at these two people. Everywhere I go, they follow me. I don't even have personal freedom anymore. I deposited my money with Henan Village Bank, and now I'm breaking the law. I deposited money to your bank, and now I have become a criminal. I have become a depositor criminal. I got off the high-speed rail yesterday and was dragged a few hundred meters. I then passed out and became unconscious. I was rushed by 120 to the emergency room. Today, I don't even have the right to walk on the street freely. This man is a police officer in Zhengzhou City. From Henan province to Anhui province, the same incident is spreading. Anhui government returned my deposit. Anhui bank returned my deposit. Anhui 
Anway Government, return my deposit. Anway Bank, return my deposit. It's speculated that most of these corrupt officials have transferred the money overseas after receiving it. Many real estate companies might have worked as their white glove, which refers to an intermediary who launders money, handles the dirty deeds, while leaving the client's hands clean. The homeowners pay the mortgage and the banks get the money, but the developers don't have the funds to finish the construction. What's going on? Where did the money go? In reality, the developer, the bank, and the local government work together to siphon off the fund. For example, Evergrande has only a few hundred billion RMB in assets, but its liabilities are as high as 2 trillion RMB. Where has this money gone? In truth, people inside the CCP system have a better understanding that the CCP has no way out. Thus, a large number of bear officials have appeared. They send their wives and children overseas to establish themselves. If anything goes wrong in mainland China, they can immediately flee with a flight ticket and jump off this sinking ship. The way they handle their wealth may be different, but the starting point and motivation are the same. They all know that the red system of the CCP is a sinking ship. They have no more confidence, but still want to exploit their power or resources to get as much as possible. In the short term, the concentration of wealthy groups emigrating will take away a large amount of wealth in a very short period of time. The rapid transfer of foreign exchange assets in the short term will have a direct impact on China's foreign exchange system, even endangering China's foreign exchange security and shaking its foreign exchange base. In the medium term, if the capital flight becomes large, the pool of social wealth that people in mainland China can share will diminish. With the massive transfer of assets, the investment and employment opportunities in China will rapidly decrease, leading to an inevitable result of a widening wealth gap. In the long run, the brain drain as a result of the wealthy group leaving China will cause a shortage of innovation and intellectual resources, significantly limiting the development of the society, or even leading to a societal decline. According to a wealth report released by Knight Frank, a global real estate advisory firm, in mid-May 2023, Hong Kong and China saw a decline in the population of ultra-high net worth individuals, while Singapore emerged as one of the top 10 fastest growing countries and regions. 2022 saw the number of ultra-high net worth individuals, or UHNWIs, in Hong Kong drop by 6% to 5,686, while mainland China recorded a UHNWI population of 88,024 in 2022, a drop of 5.9% compared to the previous year. The loss of wealth and intellectual elite in a society means that there must be a serious crisis in the society. The departure of the backbone of society will in turn contribute to the acceleration of this social crisis, thus forming a vicious circle that greatly impacts Chinese society. So why do so many millionaires choose to flee China? We have summarized the following factors. First, the CCP system is characterized by political uncertainty and high risk. The CCP's political system is characterized by a high degree of centralized power and party-state unification. Uncertainty in policy-making and implementation, frequent and unpredictable policy changes, power struggles among officials, and most importantly, Xi Jinping's policy of common prosperity, have made the rich fearful that their hard-earned wealth would be divided up overnight. The CCP's policies change all the time. One day it advocates reform and opening up for all people, next it starts to strengthen state-owned enterprises, and then it starts to push the state enterprises and suppress the private enterprises, considering them as a threat to the planned economy of the CCP. It eventually resorts to force to crack down on the rich group. At the same time, the CCP's war-wolf diplomacy has led to the country's increasing isolation. Politically, it is becoming more like North Korea, and economically it's moving back to the planned economy model, making the wealthy fear that they have gradually lost the space to continue to develop their businesses in China. Here, a police department at the provincial level in southwest China is reading aloud a book by party leader Xi Jinping. The department has made it a regular part of the official's homework during working hours. It looks like the Cultural Revolution 2.0 is playing out in China.
Second, Communist China's COVID zero policy has triggered a mass exodus. Since the implementation of the CCP zero COVID policy in 2020, public concern over immigration has also set off a movement of runology online. Runology is taken after the English word "run," which means to escape and flee China if one can. In an interview with the Voice of America, Ms. Zhao, who works in finance in Shanghai, said that Shanghai is a first-tier city in China and the most international and liberal city. She used to be proud of being a Shanghai resident until the forced zero COVID policy by the government. It changed her perspective and made her start thinking about the possibility of emigration. She said she would choose some European countries with lower thresholds as her immigration destination, given the cost of immigration, the working environment, and the cultural atmosphere of the countries. She said, "What really influenced me to leave Shanghai is that this very extreme epidemic prevention policy has made people think: if anything happens in the future, will the Chinese government use such extreme policies again?" Third, the CCP's strict restriction on capital flow prompts the rich to move their assets. The CCP has imposed strict control on the flow of capital. In China, it isn't easy to move money out because of an annual quota of fifty thousand U.S. dollars. Previously, there were still some underground channels to exchange money, but the Chinese government's controls on immigration and capital outflows have become increasingly strict, and the wealthy are faced with the challenge of moving capital and investment abroad. The rich in China have, in fact, been looking for options to move their assets out of China over the past few years. Opening family offices overseas is one of the ways through which they are able to preserve wealth, passing it on to the next generation. For example, Singapore has opened more than 400 family offices in the past few years, almost half of which are Chinese. Singapore has now become the country with the fastest-growing family office in Asia. Fourth, the freedom of speech and political freedom. Restrictions on freedom of speech and political freedom are also part of the reasons for the flight of China's wealthy. Freedom of speech in China is severely restricted, and the press is tightly controlled. Political activities and civil society organizations are suppressed as well. The wealthy want to express their views, participate in public affairs, and enjoy their personal freedom in a more open and free environment. This man, a resident of Shanghai, took his mother to Thailand to look at houses with the goal of leaving China. Daniel Bian, who appeared at the beginning of the episode, went to Thailand to buy a luxury home because he thought it was important to be free and safe. There's more freedom and convenience in Thailand. The freedom to enter or leave the country, to travel back and forth, as well as the freedom of society and life. Freedom is very important. Fifth, the education and living environment. China's wealthy are more concerned about the education and living environment in which their children will grow up. As China's society becomes more competitive, the wealthy are concerned about whether the education system in China can provide the education quality they expect. At the same time, environmental pollution, food safety issues, and social pressures are causing them to worry about the health and well-being of their children. In order to provide a better education and living environment, they choose to leave China. The Chinese website of Japan Economy reported about Mr. Li and his family from Guangdong Province who moved to the U.S. It took 2.5 years since Mr. Li filed his immigration application, but he finally got what he wanted. He said, "It's all about the education of my children. I really can't stand the old-fashioned way of spoon feeding in Chinese schools. I definitely don't want my children to go to Chinese schools." If we go to the U.S., where creativity is important, we can give our children a good educational environment. This is our responsibility as parents. In China, in order to stand out from the fierce competition, children are faced with test battles as early as kindergarten. Not only that, but from primary school to high school, college, and graduate school, Mao Zedong thought and Marxism-Leninism are required subjects. Much time is wasted on ideological education. Many Chinese parents have doubts about such an education model.